yummy, yummy. Food in my tummy. When's the best time of the day to eat? Do you love breakfast? Do you love lunch? Do you love dinner? Morning tea, afternoon tea, supper? Do you love them all? What are your favorite times of the day to eat? And then what information do we give other people about what to eat at certain times of the day? Very controversial topic, of course, because there's so many opinions about when's the most important time to eat, how many times a day to eat, and what's the best things to eat at the times that you've decided to eat. And often when you see an exercise professional or a dietitian, nutritionist, somebody involved in food and or exercise, giving out information about food, there'll be, these are your breakfast choices, these are your morning tea choices, these are your lunch choices, these are your afternoon tea choices, these are your dinner choices, and these are your supper choices. So there's a recommendation sometimes to eat five times a day. There are, of course, people now who eat once a day and or once every second day. Sometimes that people are fasting for longer than that now. So what information do we give about food and times of the day and what to eat at those particular times? Is it important to find out what our client wants, what the person wants that we're talking to, not what we think they should do? And it seems that uh, the exercise and I'm very hesitant to call it a profession because as a professional, shouldn't I be the person that asks my client what they want? So here's a beautiful question. What's the favorite time of the day for you to eat? Or when do you like to eat food? Rather than what do you eat for breakfast? What do you eat for lunch? What do you eat for dinner? Because I always ask the question, when is breakfast? Uh, for most people, it's morning, sure. But what if you're a pilot? What if you're a, a, you work at a casino and you're a 24-hour croupier? What if you are a, uh, work at a hospital and you finish at 3 o'clock in the morning? Uh, what if you're a shift worker of any kind? What time is breakfast? What time is lunch? What time is dinner? And then not only that, there's people who they work two weeks of a certain number of hours and then the next two weeks they do the reverse. So two weeks they have breakfast and then the next two weeks the breakfast is at 10 o'clock at night. So what do we do about giving people information about food? And could it be a really good idea, please, to ask your client? Uh, it, the further we get away from what a client is loving to do or uh, finds normal to do or has been happily eating, is it possible that we're going to have a big upset in their lifestyle? There's a reason that people eat the way they do. There's a reason they eat at the time that they do. And there's a reason that people eat in certain places. Would that be a fair question? Uh, why do you eat what you eat? Can I ask you that? What, what, why do you eat? <laughs> there's a good one. A lot of people will say, well, I eat because I'm hungry. But is it possible that there's people who eat because they're angry or because they're frustrated or because they need some comfort food or because they're having a great day and they want to celebrate so they eat an enormous amount of food because it's celebration time. So all of those questions about food, I think uh, we, we, it seems that they get forgotten because when somebody says, what should I eat? And you're an exercise professional because we want to give the answer because we think we know the answer. We go boom, 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 and we just vomit information out of our mouth. And I know that's not a very nice thing to say, but could it be not very nice to give people information about food without finding out about them? So should we ask, what time of the day do you love to eat? But there's a few questions before that. How about, what do you really love to eat? And should a healthy eating plan always include the foods that people love to eat? Because if we say, can't have, mustn't have, don't have, shouldn't have, it's bad for you, is it possible that we'll either have a binge effect somewhere down the track where I can't have, can't have, can't have, can't have, and then I have too much, or I get really angry and frustrated because I can't have, and then my life is not much fun because I feel angry that I can't eat the foods that I want to eat. And I always ask that question of all exercise professionals. Uh, yes, we're responsible for helping people to be physically healthy, fit and strong. But what about mentally? And is it possible that food for some people is a very mental thing? That there's a really interesting relationship with food. So what is it that you love to eat? And let's always include that. What is it that you don't like to eat? Do we know that about every person that we're involved with or every person that says to us, what should I eat? How about what don't you like to eat? And your healthy eating plan will never include the foods that you don't like to eat. I always put in, why would you waste calories on food that you don't like? And often we tell people you have to have this because of its nutritional value or because of the vitamins or minerals that are in it or I just think you should eat it because that's what everybody's doing at the moment. What if the person doesn't like it? And there's a lot of fashion foods that come in and out of fashion. Maybe you should eat tofu or you should eat kale or you should eat berries because they're a superfood or you should eat porridge or you should eat chicken breast. 
And a lot of those foods are, are things that people actually don't like. So should we ask, what is it that you love to eat? Let's include it. What don't you like to eat? Let's never include it. Then why do you, or what are you eating at the moment and why do you eat that way? And could they be really important questions? So specifically, if we went into your cupboard, into your kitchen, into your pantry, let's have a look at the foods that you eat and why do you eat them? If we go shopping with you or we have a, we have a look at what you normally put into your life, why do you do that? And there's lots of reasons. Uh, could it be religious? Could it be um, uh, ethical? Could it be I just don't like those particular foods? Or I've eaten this way all of my life because that's how my mum taught me to eat. Or I went to a dietitian six years ago and I've been eating like that ever since. Should we know that stuff? Could they be really important questions? So what do you love to eat? What don't you love to eat? What are you eating at the moment? Why do you eat that way? And then this really beautiful question called where do you eat? Ha, ha, ha. Do you like to eat in your kitchen? Do you like to eat standing up or sitting down? Do you like to eat lying down in front of the television? Do you like to eat at a restaurant? Do you like to picnic? Do you like to barbecue? All those really cool things that people do in their life. If we're genuinely interested in helping people achieve their goals and have them eating a healthy eating plan so that they can exercise harder and can be healthy, fit and strong, should we know all of those things before we start vomiting information on them. So where do you like to eat? And then that very interesting question, what time of the day do you like to eat? Because to tell people that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, even if you believe that, is it possible that that could get you into trouble now? Because there are some people that are passionately intermittent fasters. There are people who passionately hate eating breakfast. And if you tell them to eat breakfast, it might be the reason they don't want anything to do with you anymore. So how about what is your favorite times of the day to eat? When do you like to start eating rather than you should eat breakfast, it's the most important meal of the day. And if you are making statements like that, you should eat breakfast, you should eat five times a day, you should be an intermittent faster, all the different things that are available now, uh, information on social media about food. If you ever vomit something out of your mouth, if you ever give information, should we know hand on heart that the information that we're giving is based on more than just what everybody else is doing. And I always use that expression, just because 50 million people are doing a dumb thing doesn't make it a not a dumb thing. It just means there's a lot of people doing dumb things. So as an exercise professional, if I really care about my client, could those questions be very important? What do you love to eat? What don't you like to eat? What are you eating at the moment? Why do you eat that way? Where do you eat? And what times of the day do you prefer to eat? Could they be great questions? Then here's an interesting question. The way you're eating at the moment, uh, are you on track or off track to achieving your goals? Because there are some people that eat a certain way and even if you don't agree with the way that they're eating, that might be giving them the result that they want. There might be people that are eating really healthy food and you think that their eating plan's brilliant, but it's not giving them the results that they want. Have you heard that before? Look, I do everything right, nothing's working. So there's a great question to ask there. Are you on track or off track? to achieving your goals in regards to your food. Then what advice would you give yourself? And this is a really important question. If you say to me, Rowie, what do you think you should do to make sure that your eating plan gives you the results that you want to have the healthy, fit, strong body that you've shared with me is important to you? Could my opinion be different to yours and could your opinion be different to other people? Should it be something that we always ask? What advice would you give yourself if you were your own high performance eating coach what do you think that you should be eating? Then, of course, there's that beautiful question. As your exercise professional, what do you want from me? And notice the open body language. It's really important to find out exactly what your client wants because is it possible that they don't want any help from us about food because they have a naturopath or a dietitian or their football coach or they eat a certain way morally, ethically, religiously and they don't want help with their food, they just want help with their exercise and that's why they've come to us because we're exercise professionals. So do we need to know that stuff because at least we know then what we're dealing with but if somebody says to you, no, I don't want any help with my food because I have a naturopath, how about leave it alone? However, there are four supplementary questions that suggested are a great idea to make sure that whatever your current or your client is currently eating, that they stay on track. So the four supplementary questions are uh, the eating plan that you're on at the moment, how's that working for you? So somebody says, look, I'm, I've got a great diet from my naturopath, leave me alone. Then great question to ask, so how's that working for you? And then 
Do you have a stack of energy? Are you performing at your best? Do you love what you see in the mirror? And are you getting the results that you want? So those four questions, supplementary questions to ask about a food plan will give you a really good idea of where somebody's at consistently into the future. Because at the moment, if somebody's getting great results from the eating plan that they're on, even if you don't agree with it, uh, do you want to get into an argument? I think that's a really important question. Because if somebody's losing weight on that diet or they've got a stack of energy or they are performing at their best or they do love what they see in the mirror, uh, and I'll just ask that question. If somebody's been on a, a bizarre eating plan uh, and you don't agree with it, but they have lost weight on that, how do they feel if they've lost weight? What's the chemical responses going on in their brain? Will they have a lot more energy because they're lighter? Probably, Yes. Or will they be performing better or at their best that they feel is their best? And could the answer be yes, simply because they've got more energy and they feel good about themselves? If they've lost weight, will they appreciate that that looks better in the mirror? And that means they are getting the results that they want. So if you want to get into an argument, you could disagree with them, but why? But if somebody's exercising with you, if somebody's training with you, next time they come to, to exercise with you, you can ask those questions again. Hey, how's that eating plan going for you? Do you still have a stack of energy? Are you still performing at your best? Do you still love what you see in the mirror? And are you still getting the results that you want from that eating plan? If you argue with somebody, they probably won't want to invest time with you. If you trust them to say, look, what are you doing at the moment? It's working for you. Congratulations. Let's leave that alone. Let's go exercise. When you see them every week or two times a week or once a month, every time you invest time with somebody and you ask those four questions again, and I'll just to, just to practice so they can roll off your tongue as easily as this, how's that eating plan working for you? Do you still have a stack of energy? Are you still performing at your best? Do you still love what you see in the mirror and are you still getting the results that you want? Is it possible that if it's some kind of dodgy diet, that three weeks down the track or three months down the track and you say, do you still have a stack of energy? They might go, no, I'm a bit tired and lethargic. No, I'm not performing at my best. No, I don't like what I see in the mirror. And no, I'm not getting the results that I want. And then you can ask those questions again. So what do you love to eat? What don't you love to eat? What The way you're eating at the moment, why are you doing that? Do you want to eat a different way? And now you can actually make a difference. Maybe you can help. So I always ask this question, as exercise professionals, are we food professionals? And a lot of people will say, yes, of course, because food's very important. A lot of people will say, food is 80% and exercise is only 20%. Well, I always like to ask this question, what if food was 100% and exercise was 100% and we ate for 100% performance and we exercised for 100% performance and they all work together to create a 100% high performing human being, wouldn't that be awesome? Is it possible that regardless of the time of the day, some people like to eat cereal for dinner? Is it possible that some people like to have eggs for dinner? Is it possible that some people like to have steak in the morning? Is it possible that there are some people, I don't know, but maybe people like to have salad in the morning? I don't know. It's none of my business, except if they're my client, I want to find out what they love to eat, what they don't like to eat, what they're eating at the moment, why they eat that way, where they like to eat, what times of the day they like to start eating and prefer to eat. Uh, how do they feel about the way they're eating at the moment? Are they on track or off track? If they were their own high-performance eating coach, what advice would they give themselves? What do they want from me? And then if they don't want anything from me, how about the current eating plan that you're on at the moment? Do you have a stack of energy? Are you performing at your best? Are you getting the results that you want? Do you love what you see in the mirror? And let's be as open as possible to all the ideas that people share with us because our opinion about food, is it possible that there are other people that have a different opinion? And interestingly, is it possible that right now in the world, food is one of the most controversial topics? People argue about food all the time. Have you noticed? You go to a barbecue or a social event or the pub or you're having a coffee with people in the morning, somebody talks about it ketone diet, somebody talks about intermittent fasting, somebody talks about all the different supplements and nutritional uh, aids they're taking at the moment, and everyone's got an opinion. So how about rather than vomit our opinion, let's find out what the other person thinks, and how can we help if we're having an argument with somebody? Would it be a really good idea to genuinely be interested in our clients, and then they might be genuinely interested in exercising with us? Could that be a great question? Woohoo! Yummy, 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 I love food in my tummy. No!